Hey there, Sam. Every time I start a new project, the first thing I will do is to design a UI and a database schema. In other words, design the Entity Relationship Diagram, or ERD for short. An ERD is basically a diagram that defines what are the fields in each table and the relationship between each table. You can design your ERD on anywhere, whether you're using pen or paper, on a whiteboard, or using a software. It doesn't really matter as long as it works for you. For me, I like to use this software called Drill.io. It is a very powerful tool and it's free and open source. The link is in the description if you're interested. I'm going to go ahead and create a new diagram. The first thing we want to do is to put down all the models in our app. Each model should have a table. Let's create one in Drill.io. I'll start with the users table. The users will have an ID, created at and updated at fields. The users table should collect all the information about a user. For example, name, email, password, and so on. We'll add these details to the table later. Since this app is about writing posts, we should also create a post table that hosts data about the post. For example, the post title and the post body. Again, we'll add the specifics later. Now, a user can write a lot of posts, but at the same time, a post can be written by many users. So that means this is a many-to-many -many relationship. And to achieve this in MySQL, we'll need a pivot table. In other words, an intermediate table that records the relationship between two tables. By convention, the pivot table name should be the singular form of both tables, arranged in alphabetical order. In our case here, we have post and users. So the pivot table name should be post user because the character P comes before the character U in alphabetical order. And inside the pivot table, we'll put in the foreign key for both of the related tables, which will be the user ID and the post ID. Then we'll point the ID of the user table to its foreign key in the pivot table and specify it's a many-to-many -many relationship by using the shorthand end-to-end. -end. And do take note of the arrow direction. It flows from the user table to the post table because the user is the parent. Now, if this is still a little bit fuzzy to you, here's a small example to show you how pivot table works. Suppose we have two users and three posts. User one is involved in three of these posts, and user two is only involved in P1 and P2. Now, if you want to record this information in the pivot table, it will look something like this. So in the pivot table, there are two columns, user ID and post ID. User 1 has post 1, so the first row will put in user ID 1 has post ID 1. User 1 also has post 2, so the second row will put in user ID 1, post ID 2. And the same with post 3. Now for the second user, we'll do the same. And that's it. That's how we connect two tables in a many-to-many -many relationship. Okay, back to the diagram. A post could also have comments. Let's create a new table for that. A comment is written by a user and belongs to a post. So that means we need to put down the foreign key for both tables. Let's do that. I'll put down user ID and post ID and then link the parent table to it. And this time, both of them would have one-to-many relationship for which we'll use the one-to-end shorthand. All right, that's all of our tables in a nutshell. Let's complete each table with their fields in details. All right, now all the fields has been filled in. You might be wondering, why did I put JSON for the post body and the common body? Why not just use string? And the reason is, the library that we're gonna use later on for the text editing part of the app is pretty complicated because it has to handle different type of text formatting options, like setting some text as headings, apply different font sizes and colors and so on. So if we just store the post content as a string, we wouldn't be able to easily store the formatting options. And that's the reason why you want to use JSON to store the post body and comment body. And now let's dive into the code and set up all the tables. The first thing we want to do is to set up our database connection and create a database for our app. Go to the .env file and change the MySQL connection details to your own setup. Then I'll create a new database in my MySQL instance and I'll do that in MySQL Workbench. I'll click on the Add New Schema button and give my new schema a name of live post. Click on Apply and apply again. 
And that's it. We have now created a new schema in our MySQL server. And now the next step will be create our database tables that we just designed in our newly created schema. And Laravel makes this extremely easy for us by using a concept called migration. So migration is essentially version control for our database. It is a series of files that perform schema operations on a database. For example, creating new tables, updating columns, adding columns, or dropping tables. Laravel stores all the migration files inside database and migration. And as you can see here, by default, Laravel has already got three migration files out of the box. And they are there to create three tables, the user table, password reset tables, and failed jobs table. Every migration files has its specific convention for the file name. It consists of two parts. The first part is the timestamp, and the second part is the operation. Laravel will throw us an error if we don't follow this convention when we create a new migration file. So the migration file for create user table was created on 2014, October 12th, so on and so forth. And Laravel will run these migration files in chronological order. So that means in this case here, Laravel will run a create user table migration file first because it is the oldest among the three. And then the create password resets table migration file. And finally, the create failed job table. And since the migration files are run in chronological order, we need to be very careful to not create a table that's dependent on the others to be the first to run. So what I mean by that is, if the failed jobs table here has a user ID foreign key, in other words, it's dependent on the user table, it should be run after the user's table has been created. If we try to change its timestamps to a date earlier than the correct user's table, Laravel will throw us an error when we run the migration. So just be aware of that when it comes to creating migration files. Anyway, let's investigate what's inside the correct user's table migration file. As you can see, it's a normal PHP class, and it consists of two methods, up and down. In the up method is where we put in the logic for the main operation in this migration file, which in this case is to create the user's table. We mentioned that migration is a version control system for our database. So sometimes we might want to roll back our schema operations and we do exactly that in the down method. So the down method is where we put in a logic to roll back the migration. So in this case, if the up method is to create a user table, then the down method will be the opposite of it, which is to delete the user table. And now let's talk about how we can create our table. As you can see here, Laravel makes it very easy for us to create columns in our table. We call the correct method from the schema facade and pass in a table name, which is user in our case here. And in the second argument, we supply a callback function, which defines how the table will be like. So if you look at the code here, the table will have an ID column, which serves as the primary key, and a string column for name, and another string column for the user's email. And we can change SQL attribute after defining a column. And in this case, we're making the email column unique. The timestamp method will create a datetime column and the nullable attribute will just allow null values for this column. The remember token method is a helper method provided by Laravel to create a remember token for authentication. And the timestamps methods here would create the created at and updated at date time columns. All right, let's create our migration files now. Laravel actually provides us a few artisan commands to generate all these boilerplate for us. Let's go to our terminal and type in PHP artisan and it will list down all the available commands provided by the artisan console. What we are after are the make commands, the make model commands in particular. We can find out what it does by typing in php artisan make command double dash help and artisan will print out the documentation. This command is used to make a new model and it has a variety of options here. We'll be using the all option because we need all the components listed here for our API server. It does look scary, especially the components listed here, but don't worry, we'll go through them one by one in the future videos. All right, let's use artisan to create our post model. We'll type in PHP artisan, make model, and the model name will be post, and supply the all option and the API option to generate the API controller, which is ideal for an API server. And now if you look inside the migration folder, you can see a new file has been generated for us. And that's the boilerplate that Laravel has generated through the artisan command. We also need a comments model. So let's create that as well. Again, we'll go to the terminal and type in PHP artisan, make model, comment, and pass in the same option as before. All right, sweet. We now have got the boilerplate for the comments model as well. Let's do a commit 
Before we start setting up our migration files, we'll go to our terminal again and type in git status to verify all the files that have been changed. Once that's OK, we'll type in git add dot to stage all the changes. I'm using an alias here, GA, which is a shorthand for git add. If you're using a Unix-based system like Mac OS or Linux, you can install this wonderful shell framework called allmyzsh to get these awesome shortcuts and a sexy terminal just like mine. I can guarantee you, you're going to save a lot of hours in the long run. The link is in the description if you're interested. And after that, we'll commit our changes. Again, I'm using a shorthand here, GCAM, which stands for git commit m. Once we're done, I'll just push to my remote repository by typing in git push. Again, ggp is a shorthand for git push. All right, back to our code. We'll now set up our migration file to create a post table. Our post table needs a string title and also a nullable JSON body. So we'll call the string method on the table object and the name of the column is title. And for the body, we'll call the JSON method. The column name is body and change the nullable method after it. And that's it. Next, let's set up our comments table. Again, we need a nullable JSON body, which is the same as the body column in the post table. The comments table has two foreign keys, the user ID and the post ID. To create a user ID foreign key, we can call the foreign ID method, which will make the column an unsigned big integer. In other words, user ID will have a type of unsigned big integer. After we have created a column, we need to apply our foreign constraint to it. And Laravel makes it very similar as we're doing it on a raw SQL query. To do that, we'll call the foreign method and specify the user ID column. And after that, we'll call the on method and pass in the parent's table name, which in our case here will be users. And then we'll call the references method which will pass in the referencing column in the parent table. And once we're done, we'll apply the cascade on delete constraint on this foreign key. And that's it. And we'll do the same for post ID. And we're done for comments. And lastly, we need to create a migration file to create a pivot table for both users and posts. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, there's no artisan command that can generate a boilerplate for a pivot table. So we have to create this manually. Let's copy and paste our comments migration file and rename it to create post user pivot table. And change the timestamp to a later date than the users and post migration files. And in the file, we'll rename the class name to create post user pivot table and also the table name to post user. The pivot table doesn't need an ID, so let's delete it, and also the body column, and also the timestamp. We'll make both user ID and post ID into an index so we can improve the performance of the query. And next, we'll set the post ID and user ID to be the primary key of this table by calling the primary method. And last but not least, we should change the table name inside the down method from comments to post user as well. And that's it, that's our pivot table. Let's try if our migration works. We'll go to terminal and type in PHP artisan migrate and it seems like it's all working let's verify them in our mysql server we'll go to workbench and click on the second icon where we hover on the table and we can see the columns and their data type are created correctly so now we can confirm our migrations are working fine and we're done let's make another commit and we're good to go there's quite a bit of information to take in, in this lesson but do try to understand them as much as possible before you move on to the next lesson. Key takeaway for this lesson, migration is a concept of version control for a database. Laravel will run migration files in chronological order. In other words, by following the timestamp in the migration file name. The Artisan console is a wonderful tool to generate boilerplate for our project. By using it effectively, we can save a lot of time. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.